as we said earlier that we are going to tackle the very important and crucial visit by Russian President Vladimir Putin to Egypt. And uh, of course, many issues, uh, many fields uh, of cooperation, many issues of mutual concern are going to be discussed. Here, this is a very important topic. Renewable energy or energy in general. If we do have uh, some um, kind of cooperation with Russia in this very specific field, we are all on this planet in need for renewable energy and to have um, a way to, uh, or at least um, an, uh, some means to try to uh, guarantee that we are not going to suffer anymore from, uh, 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 from cuts from uh, energy uh, deficiencies and many other issues. We do have to have an expert here to tackle the issue and in details. So we are very much delighted to have the best engineer, Margaret Karam, the technical director of the Regional Center of Renewable Energy and uh, Energy Efficiency. A very good morning to you, sir, and uh, of course, uh, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much. Um, and engineering, I get them. Of course, it's no secret that Egypt is suffering from uh, a real problem regarding the energy sector. Uh, today, we are, a visit in the, we are receiving a visit by uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin uh, to Egypt. Um, to what extent this visit could help in uh, solving or uh, finding new values of cooperation between Egypt and Russia concerning the energy uh, field? Well, uh, Egypt and Russia cooperation in the energy field has been, uh, I, I think, one of the most rooted cooperations mm -hmm. among the Egyptian-Russian uh, uh, two countries. I mean. mm -hmm. uh, and this, if you remember the high for example, yeah. and one of the, I think, by me and by the example that we can look at and see how fruitful mm -hmm. and useful can cooperation in energy, energy can be useful for the country in general. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, help the dynamics of developments and help the country to develop in different aspects. Aspects, you know, agricultural uh, investments and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, with particular news uh, within the field of energy, uh, the Egyptian National Convention, I think, uh, what was announced in the, in the media at least now, that uh, there are several agreements being shaped. Mm -hmm. One of them will tackle the upgrade of the existing hydropower facilities, mm -hmm. and the other, of course, is uh, the, I would say the fire, the delicate fire of the nuclear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, in both fields, Russia is among uh, the leading countries in the world in these fields. Mm -hmm. And the cooperation in these two domains would help us, mm -hmm. in fact, to reach what I call uh, the economic competitiveness of uh, in Egypt, mm -hmm. for Egypt in these uh, uh, two fields. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly the, the upgrade of the hydro power uh, facilities in Asia mm -hmm. would help us, okay, uh, the hydropower now is the cheapest source of electricity. Mm -hmm. But uh, are we actually using hydropower uh, in uh, producing energy in Egypt up to this moment or not to a great extent? We are not depending on that source of energy. Okay, this is a good question. Uh, for, this would be light in the building somehow. Mm -hmm. Back in the 70s and the early 80s, we relied on almost 80% mm -hmm. on the hydropower. Mm -hmm. However, with the increasing demand of electricity and the, consequently the, 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 the new installations of power uh, uh, facilities, yeah. electricity generation facilities, now the share of hydropower is 8 to 10 percent mm. only. From 80 percent? From 80 percent. 8 to 10 percent? Yes, and just the a huge decline in the, the, the decline. Price. In fact, the, uh, the mm. each year, you know the hydro, uh, the hydro, for example, mm. is 2,100 megawatts mm. uh, restored the capacity. Mm. Uh, now in Egypt, we are uh, 32 Thousand mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So it is not a decline, but we are increasing in the yes. fossil fuel yes. side, in conventional power plants and using mm -hmm. natural gas. And natural gas, and on the other side of the equation, we have also uh, renewable resources in Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked in earlier. Yeah. Uh, but actually, we are not depending really on these renewable sources of energy at the moment. Yes, indeed. Uh, Unfortunately. 
film or in but now we have the, I would say the political world. Mm. And the yeah, most world important. Mm. Yes. So whenever we are talking about these technical issues, okay, these are things which we can ex change experiences between the Egyptians and the Russians. And I think as you have kindly mentioned that the previous cooperation proved that we can do it. But let's talk about about it a little bit on the investment or on the economic side. We are going to have, inshallah, our uh, economic summit in China and Sheikh um, on the 15th of uh, March. Do you think that this visit in specific is going to pave the way for more investment in the field of energy? And is it going to be that fruitful? I mean, I mean in other words, is the, the field of energy attracting or can be uh, a sort of attraction for foreign investors and especially from Russia as they are going to know everything and in details about the situation in Egypt, about the security file, about the needs of the Egyptians and they do have, as we have also kind of mentioned, deeply rooted relations so nothing is hidden. I mean, in fact, this is a two-sided play. Mm -hmm. To have investments, we need energy. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. Uh, vice versa. We need to invest in energy to have investment. So, uh, if we focus on the renewable energy domain, mm -hmm. in fact, uh, uh, during the last five months, Egypt was not waiting for the uh, our uh, economic uh, conference in March, but we started working already. So we are uh, we announced, which is uh, I think one of the largest, biggest target to the region, that we announced that within a couple of years we would like to have 4,300 megawatts of renewable electricity on the grid. And uh, Egypt announced what is called feeding tariff. Feeding tariff means that we give a higher price, differential price for renewable electricity. And to prove that we are an attractive country from the investment side of view, yes. 186 mm -hmm. uh, company applied for this. 186? Yes. Yeah. And from all over the world? From all over the world, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we qualified the Ministry of Electricity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The energy qualified mm -hmm. 136 companies among this. Mm -hmm. And the target for renewable electricity from solar energy, for example, for the mm -hmm. tech system, mm -hmm. that produce direct electricity from the solar yeah. radiation, mm -hmm. the target is only 2,000 megawatts for large scale and medium scale projects, mm -hmm. and 300 for domestic use. Mm -hmm. And the 2,000 megawatt target. Uh, for the 2000 megawatt, we received offers mm -hmm. of 10 gigawatt, mm -hmm. 10,000 megawatt, mm -hmm. five times what is needed. Mm -hmm. And this means that in 